We are about to get showered with many, many blackberries. Look at this, you guys. It's the blackberry hedge in the corner of the front yard garden. Started with one pot of blackberries and then spread all by itself. The garden is looking fabulous. The sunflowers are already starting to grow. And look, I got my own plantain to grow. Plantain is really good for healing. So I'm gonna harvest that and dry it, put it in ointments. Awesome, and collards. Hey you guys, this is Dash from Bloom Where You're Planted, and today I am at a new friend's house in Lancaster and she inherited a hive. They bought this property and there was already a little hive, you can see it behind me, on their property. So we're gonna crack into this for the first time and the things we're looking for today are, is the queen there or do we see evidence of the queen? We wanna make sure that she made it through that cold snap and she's alive and well. And then is it pretty full up it's just one box so is it ready for the next the next level the next box to be put on because um, we don't want to leave them with too little room but we don't want to give them too much to defend because they could chase those small hive beetles or robber bees could come and they would have just have too much area to defend so we're looking for those things and then we're looking to see if they have enough food we're gonna feed them with a pollen patty, and we just wanna see how much honey they have, if they can make it to the spring bloom, and get off to a good start. All right, and this will be Angela's first time in the bees, um, and so she'll be kind of um, experiencing this for the first time, what it's like to be a beekeeper. So I'm excited for her new beekeeping adventure. <laughs> So this will get them. this will tell them that there's fire nearby. Okay. We've got to go drink all the honey that we can. So they just go inside and Yes, they start getting very interested in drinking the honey because they think we might have to leave in a minute. And we better okay. have full bellies because we're gonna it might be a while before we can set up a new shop. So, isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. That's the only it doesn't really calm them, it just right. gets them interested in something else besides you. Distraction. Right. Let's see what's in here. Oh, and he's got a queen excluder on there. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So. Yeah. Okay. Hello, bees. And you probably read this, but I'm avoiding their entrance. Okay. I'm standing in front of their entrance. The entrance which is, is over, over there, there, right? Yeah. Okay. Like this is like. 101 for me. Really. Yeah, so every time you come, just keep in mind, you know, okay, this is here, we don't get in front of that. Yeah. They got it stuck down good, which is great. That's probably how they time. survived, right? Mystery. So, if they've got comb up here, this is a good sign that they're built out. Okay. Underneath there. I'm going to be shocked if the queen isn't there. What I'm removing here is a queen excluder, and it allows the bees to get through to store the honey, but it keeps the queen from getting through and laying eggs in the honey area. It just makes it easier on the beekeeper to harvest the honey, but I would like to see two full boxes of bees um, before I would put the queen excluder on to to get the honey. So we're gonna take it off for now and just let this hive get a little bit more established, a little stronger before we start getting honey for ourselves. Oh, sorry, girl. oh, the frame just came apart. This hive seems old and really stuck together okay, with wow. propolis or bee okay, caulking. 
And the first few frames I tried to pull out broke. Mm -hmm. oh. And I finally got a plastic frame though pulled out and victory. There were brood or baby bees there and some honey stores. Definitely evidence that the queen is alive and well. Okay. I think we've seen evidence of the queen is there. So yeah. let's just back out and um, put on the other okay. box. We put on the upper box and then we realized that we hadn't put in the pollen patty. So we slipped that in. You can buy pollen patties at any bee supply store and it's a great source of food for hungry bees as they wait for the spring pollen to come in. So we met our goals with this little hive. <laughs> it has it was filled up, so we put another box on. They have plenty of food, and we saw evidence of the queen because we saw some brood. So when we saw that, we could be confident that the queen is in there. And Angela, how was your first time beekeeping? It's exciting. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm kind of speechless right now. That was really fun. What we are doing in the garden right now is since the last possible freeze date is over, has passed, we are planting everything, all the warm season crops. That means I'm going to get my peppers in, both hot peppers and bell peppers. So if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, go ahead with all your squashes and your green beans and your cucumbers all that amazing stuff melons it can all sink in now if you have room in your garden some of us are waiting for onions to bulb up but it won't be too long now we're starting them out young in the garden so i'm, I'm not only growing up little vegetables now i'm taking care of a little baby and he's growing up really fine <laughs> okay. A whole bed of sizzling hot peppers. Ghosts, cayenne, Thai pepper, Caribbean red habanero, and lemon habanero. It's going to be hot, hot, hot for our dash de fuego hot sauce. Okay, I've almost got all my hot peppers planted. It is just starting to sprinkle, so it's gonna rain the next two days, so it'll be perfect weather to get all these plants in. So, everything else I'll pretty much do by seed. Cucumbers, squash, melons, I'll do by seed. But my peppers, I do with my tomatoes inside. Or you can buy them. It's just you can't get those special varieties like lemon habanero <laughs> when you buy them. All right, my camera really doesn't like the wet, so it's starting to sprinkle. So I'm going to take it inside and finish planting out my bell peppers, my sweet peppers. Hopefully I can get them all done before it starts raining. Bye, you guys. Bloom where you're planted. I have a lot of root vegetables growing in the garden, so it's the perfect time for a medley of a root veg vegetable roast. <laughs> These beautiful beets are gonna taste great. I cut them up to just bite-sized pieces so they will all roast evenly in the oven. These are Japanese turnips, and this is the first year I've grown these, and they were really great. Cool season veggie, root veggie. veggie. I sliced them up, and then I cut them about the same size as the beets. 
Now this carrot was a pretty tough one. It had grown all winter long. So I ended up slicing it and then cutting it into little bitty pieces so it would get nice and tender in the dish. Now, I didn't grow these Brussels sprouts. I really struggle growing Brussels sprouts. I don't know, maybe it's my climate in, here in Dallas, Texas, but yeah, one year I got them, they were really little, so these I got from the store. <laughs> they were a perfect addition to the whole thing, though. I just picked these onions before they bulbed up, and so I put in the green parts, too. I love garlic, you guys. Garlic is just, you're going to see that a lot in my recipes. I love it. This is the way I get the skin off the garlic. I just rub it between my hands and it just comes off. And then I can chop it up and add it to the dish. This is a perfect dish to use that dinosaur or Lactino kale. It's really too tough for fresh dishes, but it's perfect for roast in the oven. It turns out really crispy and flavorful. Of course, you wanna remove the really tough stems. And then just chop it up and add it to those roasted vegetables. A little bit of oil, you guys, and look at all those flavors and colors in this dish. It's gonna be fabulous. Salt, for sure. And pepper, fresh ground pepper. And you guys, I love yellow curry. It just I love it. You're going to see it in dishes, just like the garlic. <laughs> One more mix. And you're going to see why I use this boiler pan in a minute to put the roasted veggies on. Here we go. I get to add a little water in there and it kind of steams the vegetables and they turn out a lot more tender than they would have without the water. So about a cup of water I add in the bottom and then I put them in the oven and roast them about 20 minutes at 450. I just ground up some sausage to add to the whole dish to give it a little more flavor and make it a whole meal. And there they are, just tender, flavorful, roasted vegetables with sausage, just mix it all together and you've got a main course for your family straight from your garden. Now this hutch needs a little special attention because it was really leaning forward a lot. And the legs on this side were starting to rot. So I bought some cement foundation stones and I bought some gravel and we are gonna work on this spot and level it so we can get Buddy in a bigger cage. What do you think, buddy? You think you'll like that? I think you will. All right, you guys, I'm halfway there. I'm getting closer. Got to put it in the gravel. Man, you guys, I am red in the face. I'm tired <laughs> and clearly, I didn't know this about myself, but I am horrible at making things level. Yes, I am. <laughs> apparently, apparently my whole world is at a slant. And I cannot make these rocks level. It's just so frustrating. <laughs> a 
apparently that corner over there was a lot lower than I thought. I probably should have put the level on it and, and checked what I was dealing with before I started to dig. So clearly this corner is much higher. <laughs> Did not realize that. So yeah. All right, so I wish I could say Homestead Victory, but I cannot. In fact, I'm really frustrated. I'm tabling this project for another day. Probably Saturday is the next time I can get back to it. On the weekend, I can get back to it. So I'm just going to shake off my frustration and I get to go have a movie night with my girlfriends tonight. So I'm gonna go do that. And I'm gonna get back to this later. So, and then hopefully I'll be able to say at the end of it, Homestead Victory, you guys, but not quite not quite yet my world is at a slant apparently all right hey guys i am still working on leveling this rabbit hutch so i can get the rabbits in their individual hutches and give them more cage room so this is the type of project that when i started it i thought two hours tops no problem so a week and a half later, I mean, I've had to leave it. I, I couldn't work on it, I didn't have time. So it's about a week later and I've got one hour and I better be able to get this done. All right, I'm actually gonna put two stones on to make up for the lower part of this corner. My night in baseball cap and jeans, thank goodness, helped me out with that suggestion. Sometimes you just need another mind to look at your project with fresh eyes and say, hey, well, why don't you raise that corner with, two, with another stone? Yeah, so I think this is gonna work. I've got like a half an hour. <laughs> I could do this. And it's not like I just have to level all these, but each stone has to be level. And then <clears throat> we have to level this way too. So yeah, it gets complicated. <laughs> okay, let's see if this works. I'm almost afraid to try it does not look level to me, but it measures level. So, must be level. All right, let's do this. Okay, you guys, the joke is on me today. A cruel joke, if you will, because it is indeed level, but <laughs> wait for it, apparently this foot, this leg had rotted quite, quite a bit, quite a bit. It kind of sunk down in the mud and rotted, so now I have a rabbit hutch <laughs> with one leg substantially shorter than the other. Um, probably should have checked that. Not sure how I missed that, but yeah, okay. Well, not sure what I'm gonna do about that, but I think I'm done for today. <laughs> oh my goodness.
still low. <laughs> All right. All right, let's see what happens when we open and close it. Yeah. Homestead victory. <laughs> One level rabbit hutch. <laughs> yes. All right, to finish up this project, I need to trim around here. This is roofing material I put on a door for the top of my rabbit hutch. It's a little heavy, but I kind of like that because predators can't get in and lift the lid and get into it. But you see the rabbits, they it was this like, and they chewed right here, along here. So I need to trim everything to about that, to about an inch all the way around. And make sure everything's glued down. And then I've got to take this out, this divider. That shouldn't be too hard, I just gotta work it out. And then it'll be ready for Papa Rabbit. Yay! Buddy, your new pad is almost done. Yes! <laughs> You're gonna be saying, Homestead Victory! With your ears, be victory! Come on, you can give me more enthusiasm than that. All right, or not. Hey you guys, I just thought I would pop in here at the end of this video and tell you why you haven't been hearing as much from me lately. I'll show you. <laughs> I am taking care of my niece's little boy during the day. So he has kind of rocked my world, literally. So I think that the most challenging thing is not really the homesteading, it's editing. <laughs> So, but this is good. I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you that even if you have kids, you can still do it. Um, so I spend a lot of time wearing him and doing what I normally do. So, all right, you guys, be patient with me. I'm sure I will get my feet under me before long <laughs> and get out more videos more regularly. All right, I just wanted to update you. Bye now.